Ready? Ready. One, two, one, two, three, four. of you who are watching, welcome to you. Of course, I can't see any names. But at end, I would like you to know and everyone to know that we are a welcoming, affirming path of spirituality, positive path of spirituality, and all are welcome here. Thank you for being the church. Our musicians today are Don Rao, Dorian Pariba, Donna Roselli, and featuring Chuck Chase on special music. All right, we do have some announcements today, uh, as usual. And those are the links that where you can go. You can go to um, unity uh, unityofsteward.org forward slash upcoming hyphen events for everything that's happening. And I, I understand that some people couldn't find the connection um, link for the connection meeting. I apologize. I was going to put that in the comments today, but because my phone is being used as a camera this morning, uh, go to our website and you will find the Zoom, the Zoom link for our connection meeting, which will happen as soon as we're done here this morning. Our prayer chaplains are ready to hold you in prayer. If you'd like to send in a prayer request, please send an email to prayer at unityofsteward.org. And you can also call Silent Unity's 24-hour prayer line to pray with a prayer associate at Unity Village. And you can see the phone number. Well, you can't see the phone number. You'll see it later. The phone number is 816-969-2000 to pray with a prayer associate. As usual, every Monday that you can join in to the distance meditation via Zoom, via Zoom and that's Mondays at 4 p.m., with Reiki Master Cheryl Roby. So I don't know about you, but I've needed some extra time of meditation, prayer and meditation this week. So I invite you to join Cheryl tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. Right. So here's an opportunity um, coming up for us to be a presence, for you to be a presence in our sanctuary, a virtual presence. You know, I, I'm looking at some photographs that you all have sent me in, uh, sent in to me uh, when we started this pandemic journey. So I'm looking at the photos that y'all sent in, and uh, I saw something that a colleague was doing uh, recently, and she's had people, it's a fundraiser actually, where people send in their photos, and she's having made these large cutouts. Um, it's actually made online, and I'm gonna, for, those, for those of you who are watching later, I'm going to show you the picture right now. And there, so there are, there are busts from like the, from the chest up, and you can set them up so they're sitting over the seats. And as I said, it's a fundraiser. So if you'd like to have your picture, your cutout 
of your photograph in our sanctuary. Uh, I invite you to send a picture to me. That's at rev, to revjudedenning at gmail.com. And if you've already sent me a picture and want me to use that, let me know that as well. However, if you've sent me people a picture of you in a couple, that's not going to work. I need, I need single people in the photograph. Okay, price. $45 for one photograph and 90 for two. Uh, and remembering that this is a fundraiser for Unity of Stewart. And uh, hopefully next week you'll see everything in the right order on the screen. <laughs> All right. So if you would close your eyes and take a deep breath with me. Sweet Spirit, fall gently upon us this morning. Move in and through us, calming us, infusing us with peace, comfort, and divine revolutionary love. We hold our country in light, in love, and in safety, knowing that goodwill prevails. May we be emissaries of light in this situation and all situations. May justice prevail. Amen. May this Christ light ignite in us a divine love that transforms our energy into purposeful action. And our daily word affirmation today is all is well with my soul. No matter what is going on in the world around me, the state of my soul is always perfect harmony and poise. I recognize that my soul dwells in perfection beyond time in the infinite realm of God. I relax knowing peace and comfort are always as near to me as my next breath. In the depths of my soul, all is well. As I meditate on this truth, I relax into the infinite presence of God. Everything in my world is expressing in perfect harmony, and highest good is manifesting. With ease and grace, I flow with that goodness, allowing it to permeate my feelings and consciousness. I relax into this blissful communion where I know perfect peace and become aware that all is well with my soul. And let's take a deep breath together. Indeed, knowing that the power and the presence of God is here always within us and all around us, moving in and through the world as us. So we come together in this time of prayerful celebration of spirit, knowing that all is well with my soul. And I invite you to affirm that with me. Together. All is well with my soul. And let's take that deep breath and affirm together, all is well with my soul. And so it is. Amen. And as we prepare for prayerful meditation, let's sing Be Still. And Band, I'm going to ask you to wait one moment so I can get down there and turn the camera around. Okay, Band, you're on. Be still, be quiet, it's the only Amen. Uh -huh. 
Thank you. Doing that, I invite you to relax where you are. And take a deep breath. Take several deep breaths. Allowing your body to relax, intentionally releasing any tension that you may hold, be holding in your body. Dropping your shoulders. Make sure that your jaw is unclenched. And I invite you to be here now in this time and space. This meditation is based on a daily word from July 4th, 1948. And so as we move into prayerful meditation, taking another deep breath of spirit, of divine love, of peace, I invite you to allow the words you hear to become the words of your own mind and heart this morning. Spirit lifts up my heart and mind that I may serve humanity. Spirit gives me the courage to do the things that come to me to do. The divine infinite keeps me from downheartedness, gives me the wisdom and the joy to keep the hearts of those around me lifted gives me the willingness to share in common responsibilities. I entrust my life, my country, and my ideals to the activity of God in all things. I work not to destroy, but to preserve the good, not to enslave others, but to liberate the enslaved in all lands. The victory for which I pray, in which I serve, is the victory of all humanity. I stand strong in my faith, seeing the dignity of the human spirit. I envision a nobler, kinder way of life. I surrender to divine guidance, knowing I am led to the tasks that lie ahead of me, to the labor of uniting the nations of the earth, to the peace founded not on force, but on mutual respect. I hold our country in light, in love, and in safety, knowing that goodwill prevails. May I be an emissary of light, in all situations, in the quiet. And as we have co-created this space, this sacred space of love and light, I invite us to bring into our awareness all of those who are on our prayer list here at Unity of Stewart, all those that are in our minds and hearts and every person in our country. And I invite you to whisper their names or any situation into this holy space. releasing 
our prayers, our loved ones, every situation into the care and keeping of the one. We pray this in the name and in the nature of the indwelling Christ consciousness. And so it is. Amen. And as I said earlier, our special music today features Chuck Chase singing Oceans of Love. One, two, three, one, two, three. I am blessed. All your presence within me. I am blessed. For your ocean. your presence within me and I give thanks to the heavens above when I walk in the morning just a little light in the sky Look to my left and look to my right, and I watch where I'm walking, and I look at the and I give thanks for your oceans of. something else <laughs> how about y'all sing at home with us with that last chorus yeah, i am there blessed you go. We're happy. how about we do that she, right? to keep going. she says wants us to keep going oh, so tell, tell, do tell everybody tell everybody what i'm doing okay. she not, is hooking up her mic so you can hear her better 
But let's, so everybody at home can sing that last verse with us. Let's just okay. do that I am blessed for, okay? One, two, three, one, two, three. I am blessed for your presence within me. your oceans of love, I am blessed for your presence in me, and I give thanks to the heavens above. Both. I use both of them. For your own of love. All right. Okay. Two endings for the price of one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Breathing again. Last week, we began our series on the book See No Stranger a memoir and manifesto of revolutionary love by Valerie Kaur. And I just want to mention the pronunciation of her name. It's K-A-U-R. Um, and I pronounced it Kaur last week. And I, I've been informed by more than one person that it's Kaur. So there you have it, Valerie Kaur. Valerie Kaur describes revolutionary love as the choice to enter into wonder and labor for others, for our opponents, and for ourselves in order to heal and transform the world around us. She explains that this kind of love is an orientation to life that is personal and political and rooted in joy. Moreover, it is a force for justice that can only be practiced in community. So, once again, the choice to enter into wonder and labor for others, for our opponents, and for ourselves in order to heal and transform the world around us. Like many of you, I watched the unfolding of the insurrection on January 6th with disbelief, with anger, and with deep sadness. And I thought, and during that week, and I actually said this out loud to my sister, who we were on uh, FaceTime together watching this unfold, and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm teaching on revolutionary love. I'm in this beginning of this series to teach how to love the unlovable, to teach how to love those that we call our opponents. And I had these following thoughts. Am I supposed to wonder and labor for those people who scaled the walls, who violently pushed past the police, causing death and destruction? Those people who stormed through our Capitol building, desecrating the chamber, ransacking offices, and forcing our representatives to flee in fear for their lives? Am I supposed to have compassion and love for the man who walked through our Capitol building waving a Confederate flag? Am I supposed to have compassion and love for the people who wanted to overturn by force the results of a legal and fair election? And am I supposed to have compassion and love for those in the highest level of our government who allowed this to happen and perhaps encouraged it to happen? How do I step into revolutionary love after that? Well, if you would have talked to me in the first or second day after that insurrection, I might have said, nope, can't teach on it, not feeling it, just can't do it. But as I remember who I am, what I'm made of, and who I serve, the answer to all of those questions that just came up is yes. Yes, 
Yes. I am called to be a stand for revolutionary love. As I've said many times before, the work that we do here in spiritual community, that the work that we do here at Unity of Stewart is not for the faint of heart. It's not for those who don't have that spiritual crowbar that when our hearts want to slam shut, we have that tool, that spiritual crowbar to pry open our hearts, to hold a space of love and compassion for all people, even those we call our enemy. But not without calling for accountability and justice. And so we press on in revolutionary love. Last week we explored step one, learning to see no stranger, learning how to love others with the compassion of the Buddha, the heart of Jesus, the African Ubuntu awareness. I am because you are and the ancient Sanskrit wisdom of oneness that we embrace in unity. We learn this practice course says, when we wonder about people, when we grieve with them, and we choose to fight with and for them, to build the kind of solidarity the world needs. We'll move through step two and step three uh, step two, uh, next week, tend the wounds, and step three, or step two, tend the wounds, and step three is learning how to breathe and push. But last week, we started with wonder. Course says wonder is our birthright, a way of being in the world that opens our hearts and minds and allows us to continue to discover and grow including gaining information about how to understand, appreciate, and ultimately love others and ourselves. The failure to wonder, the fear of the unknown, in contrast, locks us into our stories, creates separation, and disables our capacity for empathy, which is the beginning of violence. So today we're going to address two aspects of step one, learning to see no stranger, and those are grieving with and fighting with and for others. As I explained last week, Cor is a Sikh activist, filmmaker, and civil rights lawyer who grew up in Clovis, California, on her family's farm, and whose life plan dramatically shifted in the aftermath of 9-11, which, which happened when she was a junior at Stanford University. She was originally planning to be a professor of religious studies and oral history, but when images of Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda flooded the news, Kor's life changed. Because anyone who shared that profile, Muslims, Sikhs, Hindus, Arabs, and other South Asian Americans, and all those who were deemed other, became targets for violence and persecution by a frightened and reactionary nation. Her shift was cemented on September 15th. While still at her parents' home, she received a phone call from a close friend in Phoenix telling her that a close family friend, whom she called Bo Beer Uncle, had been killed by a lone gunman in a pickup truck while he was planting flowers in front of his gas station. So, what was going on in Cora's life at that time is she was planning her honors thesis and it involved a trip to India to create an archive of oral history of Sikhs, Hindus, and Muslims who had survived the massacres of India's 1947 partition and the Sikh pogroms of 1984. And that trip had been canceled by the university deemed too dangerous. So she shifted her focus to what was happening right in front of her. She writes, I didn't know how to stop the hate violence but I knew we needed to document it for any kind of inf intervention to happen. So she and her cousin spent months driving across America, following news of hate crimes as they popped up in, the e in their emails. 
remember there was no Twitter or Facebook then. So they just were on list serves, checking their emails for what was happening around our country. And at each stop they found, they interviewed and videoed the victims, their families and communities. And the most consistent and immediate targets for hate were Sikh Americans, the only people in the US to wear turbans, not as optional cultural garb, but as an integral part of their faith, an extension of their bodies. During this time, Cora learned how to witness emotions without getting overwhelmed by them. She writes, when I wanted to shut down, I tried again to wonder about the person in front of me and ask the next question. She documents the story of Bobir uncle, his life, his death, and the loss to his family and the community it represented. Just one week after his murder, 3,000 people came to Uncle Bobir's memorial for prayers and tears and resolutions against hate. And she writes, this outpouring of love was enough to change his wife's experience of the loss. She bore the pain, but not alone. She shared it with people she had never met before, saying they didn't even know me, but they cried with me. So core stand is that when we grieve together, the act of grieving together leads us to understanding. For Cora's aunt, the act of love from the larger community was a balm for her spirit. Nothing could bring back her husband, but communal grieving made it possible for her to breathe and learn to live with her wound without having the pain create another divide, separating the world into us and them. Cor writes, some forms of grief are impossible to bear alone. In the wake of trauma, when it feels like we've been thrown into a hole, we need to be able to tell the story of what happened in order to return to a sense of community. We must be able to say, this was wrong and must not happen again. Telling the story is the prerequisite for justice. But for the story to matter, someone we trust must be listening. And that's what we're called to do as agents of revolutionary love, to bear witness and more, to be willing to allow our hearts to be broken open to share in another's, in a stranger's pain, which is the true meaning and practice of compassion. Give me one second. Carol concludes that piece in her book. Grieving together, bearing the unbearable, is an act of transformation. It brings survivors into the healing process, creates new relationships, and energizes the demand for justice. And what would it look like for a nation to grieve together? She says, I am talking about sitting with pain together, modeling how to do that in public view, reflecting quietly on our deepest values and mourning the dead, all dead. It requires acknowledging the ways historically oppressed people continue to suffer and the ways people with good intentions continue to benefit from the suffering. It requires witnessing the pain of trauma without, try, without trying to control or minimize it, and then listening and continuing to listen. And acknowledging our own pain, our own grief, and our own exhaustion is also an essential element. I don't know about you, or well, I know about some of you, but I am exhausted with this, with this unrest, with this separation, with us and them, all on top of a pandemic that we have no control over. So what I am called to do and what you are called to do is to take time 
to heal, to breathe, to rejuvenate, and, and then get up and do what is ours to do. And we must understand that soothing words are not enough, not when trauma has traversed centuries. But if we are present to pain, if we all sit together in rooms of the heart and grieve together, we can begin to ask, how do we fight for one another? Which is the final element in learning to see no stranger in this step one. You know, Sikhs are self-described warriors sworn to defend all people in harm's way. I have a, a, a picture here of what I'm going to talk about next, and I recognize that you're on Facebook, will not be able to see it, but if you watch the video later, you'll be able to see it. So, Sikhs have a religious dress. They contain five articles of faith, and all those articles begin with the letter K, and they're often referred to as the five Ks. One is a steel bracelet called a kara, a comb called a kanji, an undergarment called a kach, a dagger called a kirpan or kirpan, and long uncut hair called kesh. These articles were meant to make Sikhs visible so they could never hide in a crowd or hide from the call to fight for justice. You know, Kaur's grandfather said this, love is a dangerous business. If you choose to see no stranger, then you must love people even when they do not love you. You must wonder about them even when they refuse to wonder about you. You must even protect them when they're in harm's way. <laughs> so she was feeling pretty frustrated during this time after 9-11. And then she heard a rendition of Martin Luther King's 1967 speech, Beyond Vietnam, where he proclaimed that our real enemies were not individuals, but unjust systems, the three evils of poverty, racism, and militarism, and called for a nonviolent non revolution that shifted collect collective consciousness, a radical revolution of values. I'm going to say that one more time. Martin Luther King called for a nonviolent revolution that shifted collective consciousness, a radical revolution of values. I claim that that's what we do here in the unity movement. We are looking for a shifted collective consciousness to love and to peace and to enough for everyone, equality, and equity for all. So, CORE was ready to fight for justice, joining the National Student Strike, a coordinated student walkout across the country in protest, in protest of our government's plans to invade Iraq. Now, she was committed to nonviolence, and she recognized that the fight impulse is ancient and fundamental. And while her ancestors fought with swords and shields and bows and arrows because they didn't have a sophisticated matrix of legal and political avenues to defend civil and human rights, there was no international law to mediate conflicts then between nations. Even though the ancients didn't have that system, we do. And she did. And she chose these as her weapons. She shares, any act to change the world around us begins within us. It starts with a sense of agency, a sense that we do have the power to affect change. We are able to affect change. When we feel helpless in the face of injustice, it's easy to give in to the idea is I can't do anything. Who am I? I'm only one person. It's easy to go there. And it's easy to also think, oh, this is just the way things are. It's the way things have always been. Then, someone or something comes along and sparks our imagination, 
a prophetic voice from the past, a friend on the phone, a pandemic, a murder, or an assault on the Capitol building. And we begin to see, she says, that the norms and institutions that order this world are not inevitable, but constructed, and therefore can be changed. It's up to us to wake up, to elevate the collective consciousness, the internal shift in awareness, the realization of personal responsibility, and to tap into our own capacity our capacity to change the world around us. And it may feel like waking up. So going back to the Sikh principle of being a warrior in the world, how do we become warrior sages in a time like this? Who will we fight for? What will we fight for? What will we risk? And it begins honoring that fight impulse within us. So I invite you to think about what breaks your heart. What broke your heart this week? Notice how you felt. Maybe your fists were clenched. Maybe your jaw was closed. Maybe your pulse quickened. Notice what it feels like to want to fight back and honor that in yourself. She says we are called to hold on consciously to our conviction and be ready to act when the world says now, now. Being certain that we can channel our potent energy into something that delivers life, that delivers harmony, that delivers peace, instead of chaos and destruction and death. So Cora asks us to answer four questions. What is our sword, our kirpan? What can we use to fight on behalf of others? What can we use to fight on behalf of our democratic republic? Our pen, our voice, our art, our pocketbook, our presence. Begin where you are, your home, your campus, your spiritual community, on the front lines or behind the scenes. Second question is, what is our shield? When we can use, what can we use to protect ourselves and others when the fight is dangerous? Our cameras, our legal counsel, a group of allies, public witnesses, our safety matters. And then what is our instrument? In Sikh legend, ancestors designed the Dilruba, D-I-L-R-U-B-A, a stringed instrument, instrument small enough for soldiers to carry on their backs into the battlefield, to lift their spirits in music, in song, and poetry in the mornings before they face the fire. So what centers you? What brings you joy, peace, a deep breath, healing? Is it singing? Is it dancing? Is it drumming? Yoga, prayer, meditation, being in spiritual community? Which is the last question. Who is our sacred community? Who is your sacred community? We just need three kinds of people, she says. Someone who sees the best in us, someone who is willing to fight by our side, and someone we can fight for when they need our help. Bring them together. Not only have we created a spiritual community, but we've created a pocket of revolutionary love. This is how we choose love. Fierce, strategic, demanding, and disciplined love, engaging the long labor for a new life and a new world. I'll close with this passage that was shared with me this week by John O'Donohue. The human heart is being birthed in every experience of your life. 
everything that happens to you has the potential to deepen you. It brings to birth within you new territories of the heart. I affirm with great love new territories for all of us. Namaste. And before we join in our celebration of abundance and gratitude, I want, you to, I want to talk to you, let you know about a workshop that's coming up that's going to be facilitated by Reverend Cher Trenholm and me. And we're calling it Good Grief, and that'll be uh, virtual on Zoom on Wednesday, February 17th at 6.30 in the evening. Registration will begin next week. So if you'd like, mark that on your calendar, and let's come together in good grief. Now I invite you to join me in a celebration of abundance and thanksgiving. And uh, for those watching the recording later, this is where you can text to give at 772-291-0104. You can go to unityofsteward.org and click donate on the upper bar, or you can do paypal.me forward slash unity of steward. Of course, as always, you can mail us a check. I want to say thank you. Thank you to one and all of you who give of their financial gifts to Unity of Stewart. And I want to mention those of you who are, connect, who are consistent givers and those of you who are stretching and expanding your abundance by giving to Unity of Stewart. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let us affirm our prosperity prayer together. Well, you may not be saying it together, but I'll say it for us. In a universe overflowing with the allness of God, all of the needs of unity of steward and those we serve are instantly, constantly, and bountifully met. From every direction known and unknown, expected and unexpected, our abundant good comes to us now. We are grateful. Amen. And our love offering blessing. There we go. <sighs> Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I give and receive always in love. And so it is. Uh, we're going to, are we going to bless, you ready to bless the kiddos? All right. So I'm going to, bear with me. I'm going to turn the camera over here to the band while we bless our kiddos. We love you. We bless you. We truly, truly appreciate you. We behold the Christ in you. Let's join in the prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds me. I am light. The love of God enfolds me. I am love. The power of God protects me. I am power. The presence of God watches over me. I am presence. Wherever I am, God is. I am divine. And the peace song, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Each moment and live each moment in peace, each 
Okay, everybody. <laughs> blessings to you. Blessings. I continue to send blessings of happy and hopeful new year. Despite everything that's happening on the planet, I invite us to hold that place of revolutionary love in our hearts. And so it is. Oh, if you're watching this later, stay tuned for a new instrumental collaboration by Doreen Pariba and Don Rao. All right, everybody. Namaste.